It's SpaceX's third Hyperloop Pod Challenge, and this time, the name of the game is Speed. It's been about two years since SpaceX announced that it would be doing these pod challenges. The first pod challenge, that was held in Texas, and it was all about the pod design. The second challenge is held right here at SpaceX headquarters, and that was about getting those pods into this tube. This third challenge, it's more than just getting in the tube. You have to be able to go fast, and that's the name of the game today. The fastest pod wins. The competition started with 150 teams vying for the top 25 spots to be here at SpaceX. Now of those 25 teams, three of them will have a chance to put their pod into the tube for the competition. Now those teams are VAR, which won last year's competition, Swiss Loop, and Paradigm. So we basically focus on a lightweight design that accelerates really quick in the tube and that we're using our onboard propulsion system. It's a, a wheel. Um, press to the rail and accelerate through an electric motor. It's basically an electric car push to the rail and accelerate. The pod we have this year is actually the same pod we had back in January with a few upgrades. We've re uh, redesigned our lateral control system, whole new braking design and uh, new air skates and suspension assembly. So everything basically below the undercarriage has been re redone and we've made a lot of upgrades for our electrical system. Currently, the Swiss Loop team is behind me getting its pod ready for a run down the about one mile track. Now, last year it took 30 to 45 minutes for SpaceX to vacuum seal the tube. This year, 10 to 15. Progress. We have a rocket propulsion system. We have cold gas flasks. We fill it with nitrogen and expel 150 bars out of the nozzles we have. So that's what we are doing. Let's see how fast we can go today. Originally, the Hyperloop was a white paper put out by Elon Musk who said, you know what, everyone else, you figure it out. But now with his boring company where he wants to put tunnels well everywhere, Elon's probably got a little bit more invested in the Hyperloop. In fact, he says that he's going to put a Hyperloop underground between DC and New York. He got it out to the public and everyone was excited about the project. And yeah, we're excited. Yeah. <laughs> he's the, the idol of all engineers. I mean, like the ultimate nerd, geek, like what, what have you. He's the he's Nikola Tesla of our day and age. While maglev might be the future of Hyperloop, right now at this competition, it's just about going as fast as you can in the allotted time. In fact, VAR basically built a very nice electric car. Yeah, we had a lot of discussions in the team because we also want to gain knowledge on the Hyperloop technology. So we had a few side projects as the linear induction motor, as well as the levitation system with permanent magnets. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of research on that, but uh, as for student team, it's also a focus to win a competition. And that's uh -huh. why we were focusing on the electric propulsion system. Meanwhile, Paradigm is using the pusher, but they're hoping that their air bearings will reduce the friction enough to get them up to speed. Where we ride on air bearings as it is, uh, we're in a frictionless environment. We're, we're aiming for, I believe, a top speed of 120 right now. Um, that's uh, just uh, what we feel comfortable with. With or without the air bearings, the pod actually, you can push it with one hand. It, it's that balanced and that smooth that we're, we're not uh, that concerned with the drag. And finally, Swiss Loop, they're using a jet propulsion system and wheels. The system is a little bit capped for safety reasons. So without safety reasons, we would probably be able to beat uh, Paradigm. But I think at this moment, that's, it's close. While most of these teams actually are part of a college, it, they rely a lot on sponsorship from companies. And frankly, sponsorships are key to the success of these teams. A college can only spend so much. Well, it helps a lot. I mean, without money, we can't build any pod or um, gain knowledge on something or try out different test benches to test our stuff. Uh, yeah. We, we've recently had the buy-in of the Canadian government, a large engineering firm such as Hatch. I mean, corporate sponsors are now emailing us. We're not reaching out to them for, for things. So, like, if we perform well today, I, I don't think we're going to have an issue at all. And while it would be great for any of these teams to go home with a trophy and bragging rights of being the fastest pod in the tube, the reality is the fact that they're getting in the tube and they can get their pod down it means that these teams will continue to build and gather sponsors for the next competition. So while this is 
sort of a friendly competition put on by SpaceX. The reality is, in the future, one of these teams might be tasked with building the pods for a Hyperloop that runs underneath our feet. There are some questions that still need to be solved. I think the technique is already there from the maglev trains for different um, branches. Um, but to put all the techniques together and work as a whole system, that's, that needs to be done in the next few years. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we got a few ideas going around the drawing board. Uh, this one is pod 2.0 as we're calling it, and pod 3.0 is uh, what we're looking at down the road. And propulsion is one idea that we would like to incorporate. But we're still, that's still on a whiteboard to, to be determined where exactly we want to go. This is two years worth of work and effort coming down to this day. We're in the tube. We're happy. For us, it's, we put so much work in, in, in this project and in the technology, and yeah, we're just happy to be in the finals, and we hope to defeat our victory from last year. Yeah. Fünf, vier, drei, zwei, eins. That 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 pod just went uh, 324 kilometers an hour, over 200 miles an hour. So congratulations to the fastest team at over 200 miles an hour, the Technical University of Munich, Team War. And that concludes this Hyperloop pod competition with VAR, the winner of the last competition, winning again. Basically, it was a very small electric car, but it still won. But that means in the future, we're probably not going to have maglev Hyperloops anytime in the next couple of years. But there's going to be another Hyperloop pod competition later next year, so maybe then.